The good old CAT monitor, they are heavy and bulky. This one here weighing just over 20 kilograms and they're also getting rarer, harder to find and prices keep creeping up. But they are beautiful at what they do, which is taking low resolution content and making it look absolutely stunning. But it's just a matter of time until they die out and then we have no option but to use modern displays like this LCD monitor. Modern displays have come a long way but they struggle with low resolution content. Here we have DOSBox running and it looks very similar to many other emulators out there. We're getting razor sharp pixels but this is nothing like the real CRT looked like back in the day and especially if you're playing on a large 27 inch or 32 inch monitor it's really not that nice to look at. For this video I took hundreds of close-up photos of the CRT in action and I did the same thing using the same camera, the same settings with a LCD monitor and the latest version of DOSBox staging which has CRT shaders integrated. Let's check out how the CRT looks like. This is a 17 inch model from Acer, quite a modern version, it has a flat screen. From a distance the pixels do appear quite sharp but with the human eye we can already see there's something else going on and with the photos on the screen as we get closer we can see that CRT magic going on. The way a CRT monitor works, well there's a cathode ray gun at the back and it's shooting electrons at a phosphor coated screen which then lights up. In contrast, modern LCD monitors use liquid crystals that can be twisted to control the amount of light passing through. There are many aspects that give the CRT this unique look, but the biggest part is the shadow mask. It's like a grid-like structure that sits right in front of the phosphor-coated screen. And the CRT monitor has some small analog imperfections which just give it that warm feeling and yeah, I call it CRT magic. We're looking at Wing Commander and Monkey Island 2 and as we get closer we can really see the fine detail of the shadow mask and as we get really close the image sort of starts to fall apart but from a distance and with the human eye everything blends together and it's this grid structure that gives low resolution content, that beautiful CRT look. And now let's turn our attention to what CRT shaders do for improving the look of low resolution content on modern displays. To help with this project I reached out to UPerfect. They specialize in portable monitors and they have a very similar size compared to the classic CRT monitor. They sent us the UGAME K118 monitor. 2560 by 1600 resolution, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 18 inch is the size. It's got an IPS panel and it supports up to 144 Hz with FreeSync. Using the Display Wars website we can compare the size of the panels and look at that, it's basically identical. Now note that with the 17 inch CRT the actual viewable image is just under 16 inches. We will get back to the monitor a little bit later in the video talking about the pros, the cons, the prices and all of that but now let's have a look at some photos what the CRT shader looks like. This is the latest version of DOSBox staging. I just downloaded it today. You need to get the development version. The public release will come out in the near future and it supports adaptive shaders. That means on the fly, depending on the resolution of your monitor and the resolution of the game, it will pick the most suitable shader. You really want a high resolution monitor at 1080p. There are just not enough pixels to work with. Best case scenario is a 4K monitor, but this one with 1600 vertical pixels does a very good job at showing that fine detail of the shadow mask. With my eyes sitting at a similar distance like with the CRT monitor, you can really tell the difference. So we have that fine 
grid structure inside the pixels going on just like with the CAT monitor. The colors are definitely more crisp and more vibrant. That is the beauty of modern LCD monitors and of course much uh, easier to move around. They don't consume as much power and way more affordable. I'm staying with Wing Commander and Monkey Island 2, the same games that we looked at with the CAT monitor and as we zoom in closer we can see a very similar structure to what we saw on the CAT. Of course it's not 100% identical but it really does a great job at making that image look a lot more like on a CAT monitor. And now let's talk a little bit about the monitor. On the left side there are two USB-C ports, a mini HDMI port, there's an audio port and also a little dial to control the on-screen menu. At the back we have a VESA mount so you can choose a different stand. This one comes with a soft case stand and there are two positions to change the angle. There's a setting to flip the screen 180 degrees. This is if you prefer the cables to go in from the right side. In the box we'll get two USB-C cables, a mini HDMI to HDMI cable and a power adapter. This one is rated at 30 watts. I'm using a mini PC. It has a USB-C port at the back and with a single cable it's supplying power to the monitor as well as the video signal. I tested FreeSync that is working just fine. You need to activate it in the on-screen menu on the monitor as well as with your video card and also be aware 144 Hertz only works through USB-C. If you use HDMI you are limited to 120 Hertz. The positives are definitely the color, they're vibrant and with the default settings I was pretty happy. You need to increase the brightness out of the box and every time the power is removed it will uh, reset to the lowest brightness. The viewing angles are also very good, that's what you get with an IPS panel and 144 hertz support is really nice. Just moving the mouse you can already tell the difference and thanks to the FreeSync technology DOSBox synchronizes at 70 hertz. A lot of DOS games run at that frequency. In terms of negatives I couldn't figure out how to turn off the power on the monitor and it's not covered in the manual. I had to reach out to tech support and you basically need to hold down the dial on the left side in the down position for a few seconds. But then I noticed a bigger issue a few seconds after turning off the monitor the backlight seems to come on and I contacted support and they said well yeah there's nothing wrong with that but from my perspective this is really unusual. No monitor that I've ever come across will activate the backlight with the power disabled. I don't have a power meter to test how much power it's consuming but this is definitely some feedback for the company to resolve. In terms of pricing at the time of making this video you're looking at 280 US dollars. I will put some affiliation links down below in the description and there's also a $30 discount coupon for you. So we had a look at the photos comparing what the CRT, the real thing looks like and then we compared it to DOSBox staging with some modern CRT shaders. I'm really curious what is your takeaway from this? The reality is that CRT monitors will not be around forever. They're getting harder to find, more expensive and many of them are failing. I used to really like those large sharp pixels and in a way this is more accurate. It's a digital representation of the assets displayed on the monitor but it's nothing like the good old CRT monitor would display. Now I can't unsee it and for me it has to have a CRT shader. So this video is yeah as much as is for entertainment it's also to help spread the word and us retro PC gamers, we are a little bit of a minority. There are a lot of shaders out there and technologies for console gamers and home computers but PC gamers we seem to be getting a little bit neglected. A big thank you to you Perfect for working us making this project possible and also a huge shout out to anyone involved in DOSBox or DOSBox staging and John Novak he gets a special mentioning he has been the key driver behind these CRT shaders in the latest version of DOSBox staging. He has a very unique 
interesting website where he's sharing some of his projects. I will put it down below in the video description. So there you go. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to reading your comments. And that's it for this one. I shall see you soon with another one.